In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Nano DLP on a Raspberry Pi for a one HAL duplicator 7. So this D7 is completely stock, minus of course the case which I featured in an earlier video. Apart from that, it's never been used, it's never even been plugged in or turned on. That's because I've already got my own one for home, but this one is for school. So I need to set it up the same way, and I'm going to do it the same as I did for home, which is running Raspberry Pi with Nano DLP. Now, I know this is not for everyone. A lot of people prefer Creation Workshop or other software, but for me, when I was researching this printer, I saw too many people with errors where they had a large rectangle in the middle of their print, and that's because some sort of dialogue screen had come up on the host computer, which of course goes onto the screen. Couple that with things like Windows 10 automatic updates that you can't turn off, and you might have failed prints, and if they're long prints, that's gonna be pretty heartbreaking. So for me, the only real solution was to run it on something dedicated, and so far, I've had zero issues. So this video, once again, is not to debate which is best for you. This is what works for me, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, the printer, of course, is brand new, and the other thing I bought was a kit from eBay that came with everything I needed for the Raspberry Pi. So it's a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. It also came with an injection molded case with a fan. It came with a nice little voltage adapter. This one is two and a half amps, five volts. And it also came with an SD card, heat sink, HDMI cable, and a really nice power cable for my power supply that has a button switch to turn it on and off so you don't have to be plugging things in and out. So anyway, let's get started. So this is the page we're going to be following for our install. And this is the one I used, hopefully it's still up to date and it's got step-by-step -step instructions. So we're gonna come down to the first of our steps and what we need to do is to modify the firmware to be used with Nano DLP and the note there says it can still be used with Creation Workshop. So this is not a destructive piece of firmware that's gonna change your ability to choose which program you wanna use. So we might start by downloading this and we're also gonna download the pre-configured Raspberry Pi SD image. So now that we have our firmware ready, we need to use a program called Xloader. So here we are in Xloader. I have picked my hex file. I've set it to Mega 2560. If you don't plug in the printer, the correct COM port won't show up. For me, it's showing up as COM9. And our board rate is 115200. So let's hit upload. We're done, that means we can move on to our second item and that is flashing the Raspberry Pi image onto the SD card. So this is Win32 Disk Imager. We've got our image loaded up. I know I need drive H here because F is my external hard drive and that would be an absolute disaster if I was to go over that and it will do that. So triple check, gonna come to right and hold our breath and click yes. All right, we are done. Time to take it out and put it in the Raspberry Pi. Okay, here's one other annoying thing that we have to do, and it's not really documented that well, but we need to come onto the SD card after we have burnt the image, and we need to come to config and edit with a text editor like Notepad++. Now, I've already done it here, but I have copied and pasted this text, and that comes from this website, which is another one. Funnily enough, this is not mentioned on the easy install page, but you need to copy and paste all of this and then in your config text, you need to paste it underneath everything that's there and that should end with disable overscan equals one. If you don't do this, your image will not display on the HDMI output, which means it will not display on the LCD or the printer and you won't be able to print anything. So a very important step. Once you're done, hit save eject the SD card, and then you should be able to boot the printer. So our D7 has been flashed with the firmware and our SD card is full of Nano DLP magic. So let's unbox the Raspberry Pi. Done. Oh, this is an extra layer, I like this. Looks like it should. Let's get our SD card and insert it into the right slot. USB 
and of course our power. All right, we've finally got it going. You probably need to connect it directly to your router if you're like me, and then come up and hit the Wi-Fi button, and that's where you put in your password, and it will save that, and then you can bring it back connected to the printer, and the Wi-Fi should then work. It will tell your SSID up here if that has been successful. All right, some setup steps. We need to come to setup, and then come to tools. One of the first things we need to do is expand the file system. The distribution is made to suit a variety of SD card sizes. So what it does is install itself as small as possible. And then by clicking this, it will expand and take up the rest of the room on the card. So that accounts for whatever size card you've got. I've got a 16 gig. So I'm gonna do this very important step immediately. All right, that's done. You'll find that you're unable to connect until it's finished and then all of a sudden it will work. So we're gonna come back to set up and we're going to come to tools once more and we're gonna come and get the latest version by going to upgrade nano DLP and then going to the latest stable version. A lot of the time it'll give you minimal information but if you toggle the log, you'll actually get some more detail here to follow along. Back on our main screen, if we turn on the log, we'll see our build has changed to 1827 before it was 13 something. So we've got a lot newer version here. We have our Wi-Fi working and the next step I've already done because I need to show you how it works, but you need to follow what I'm about to tell you. If you come to setup, you will see in your version that all of these are empty. That's because despite downloading an image that's meant to be for the D7, none of the settings are actually set up for it. If we come to the Nano DLP website, there is a file that you can download for D7 that will give you a factory thing to import, but I found it incompatible. Here in our print G code sections, this wait for done message appears in the wrong places and that makes the printer hang when you're printing. So what I'm gonna do is attach a file that has my working configuration in the description. You are however using it at your own risk, but it should hopefully get you going. To bring it in, you're gonna to go to tools, you're going to come to import machine settings and then down here under restore machine settings you're going to pick the file hit restore for me i found it broke my wi-fi so after that had updated i needed to come back to my router plug it in reconnect the wi-fi and then that's where this video resumed other thing i'm going to put in the description are some resin profiles so my one for bluecast 50 and monocure rapid gray 100 micron height and both of these are actually set up for dynamic calculation. However, wait after lift, I haven't done yet because when I did it, this did not exist in Nano DLP. So there's something for me to look into and I'll probably make a video explaining how all of these work. If you don't want to use mine, there'll be plenty of profiles all over the internet if you search. So now we want to do a test. So we're going to come to plates and we're going to paint and Previously, I used the oval and you can add whatever you want here. And then when you're done, click this button here. We need to give it a name and the rest doesn't really matter for the purposes of what we're about to do, but we'll hit generate and that is added a plate. So these are jobs of G code, although it's not quite G code because we've got saved images, even though there is G code attached to it. And this is what we'll print from. They'll stay on the SD card until we delete them. And if you update your resin profile, they'll come up with an, an error message here and you'll click recreate and it will reprocess everything. Now that we've got our plate ready, we're gonna to come to Z axis control. And you'll see I've removed part of the printer because we don't need the vat or the print surface here. We're gonna start by clicking floor. So what this is essentially doing is homing the Z position of the printer, it's bringing it down to the bottom. It'll trigger the optical stop sensor and then come up a little bit and come down a lot more slowly so it can get it precise and spot on. After that, we're gonna hit the 100 mil up on the top side. That's gonna move it out of the way so we can see what's happening. We should now be able to switch to projector calibration. First, gonna hit our shutter open button. That should turn on the UV backlight and then we can close it. We can hear that the fan comes on also, which is ideal. Now we're gonna to come to dynamic calibration display. 
and after a second you should be able to see the grid appear just like in the image. Okay, that's working great, so let's close that. Come back to our plates where we generated our test one earlier and we're gonna tell it to start printing from the start. So it gives us a preview of what we'll be displaying in each layer here. So we'll watch it come down to the bottom and what we're hoping for is that our oval is displayed correctly and roughly the correct size and definitely the correct orientation and that means the printer should now be working perfectly. There it is, nice and clear and that means we are good to go. So there we have it, everything you need to get your D7 working. Now I must confess that was a bit of an ordeal. I've been going for a few hours and I'm gonna edit this to make sure all the steps are in order to help you get it perfectly, hopefully the first time. But the documentation can be a little bit all over the place. Hopefully this video goes a fair way to alleviating that. There are some other videos on YouTube. The ones I checked were quite out of date and they didn't help me that much apart from the basics. So what would be next? That would be putting the case and the heat sinks and the fan on the Raspberry Pi. That would be mounting the build plate, mounting the vat, making sure it was clean with some rubbing alcohol, and then bringing it down, leveling the bed, and doing your first print. But that is a whole nother can of worms. And if you're switching over from FTM, you're gonna find it quite difficult. So hit the forums, hit that search button instead of posting up a new thread because it's the internet and somebody's probably already had the problem that you're having now. So do some research, see if you can help yourself, and only then if you're stuck, post a new topic. So hopefully this was a helpful video for you. Hopefully it can save you a little bit of time in setting up Nano DLP. I would like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time, and until then, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.